How's it going everybody? Gabriel Whitey here representing the movement towards improvement over here at Newtown Driving Range with Kelvin. Okay, MTI. We've got the MTI wristbands, Kelvin. Do you, why, do you want to get one of these? I got a tattoo. You got a tattoo? <laughs> this guy's dedicated to the brand right there. That's the type of partner I want. We got MTI on the sleeve and we got even on the pants here. So, nice. you know, we want to, you know, subconsciously influence people. Anyways, you guys, this video, I asked you guys on Facebook, Instagram, maybe some YouTube comments to leave a question that you had for Kelvin. So this video was really simple. We're just going to do a Q&A, ask Kelvin some of your questions. And, you know, this is primarily for Kelvin. So Kelvin, if you want me to chime in, I will. Okay. But uh, you're the real deal, Holyfield. So, okay. First of all, I want to say thanks to our sponsor, Apple, for, you know, giving us this computer to use for reading comments. Thank you, Apple. Um, first question from Matteo. Do better ball strikers hit it lower because in better players you see the wrist way in front of the ball trapping it? It's part of it, but it's not all of it. Uh, we couldn't, yeah, we have to look at, okay, so, so all of the, the, the release, the impact zone dynamics, the uh, path, fat path to face, all of these things matter, and, and the, the great ones actually can, can control the hands better so they can add loft, right? They can add loft or they can take off loft, but they're always controlling the face, and then they're also controlling the pass. So, so it, it really is kind of complicated more than just the hands ahead. Okay. When practicing, would you rather have students practice by hitting balls and repetition or by playing on the course from David Simmons? Uh, it depends what you need. Uh, again, there's no one answer that would fit for everyone. For some people, if their ball striking is, is where they need work, probably do that. If your ball striking is good and you're like Blair maybe, uh, uh, Thoroughbred, get on the course. Play as much, practice short game on the course, putting, everything. This is from Tron. With the drive hold release, I've noticed I've had some golf balls go way right with my driver. Should I change ball position or not have my hands as far forward at impact like I would with my irons? Uh, okay, that see. could be a path issue more than, more than hands forward. I mean, if you're gonna be, if you're gonna have your hands forward, is your path matching uh, where your target is going? Actually, you should be going a little bit left of target. If you're, if you're not rotating and you got your hands forward, that's Tiger Woods uh, or that was Tiger Woods. Um, you have to have uh, path going, body rotation to get rid of that, that excessive angle. Okay, so kind of have to match, matching patterns with how much shuffling, yeah. how much rotation. Yeah. And that's going to be correlated with the path. So well. that one would be clearly where, where Yada probably just posts up the video so we can just take a look at it. Any idea what causes my right hand to come off the club on the backswing and throughout the downswing? Any drills or tips would be greatly appreciated. Cameron Pettigrew. Okay, that one, would, when, it, when it's coming off the club, typically the right hand's actually gone the wrong way. So we're supinating the right forearm and then right, the right wrist is not staying in extension pronation. We're going actually this way. Now coming through, there's been great players, uh, whether it's uh, Fred Couples or uh, BJ, VJ, yeah. that let the right hand come off. So maybe that's not so big of an issue. Kelvin, this one's from Christian Steele. Who is your favorite swing and why? How about if I don't have one? That's How about if I, you know, if we could kind of have the amalgamation of, of a bit of JB, a bit of Bubba, a bit of... Yeah, let's do that, uh, Kelvin. Brooks Kepka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So those are some of your more favorite guys? Yeah, I, I mean, you have to say that, that no one swing has everything, but then, you know, we, we, we say we, I like the, the marching move of JB, but Bubba's got some different move that's very rotation, is very good, but then, you know, it, it's more difficult to teach that one maybe. Gotcha. So it just depends. Once again, the way I see Kelvin is sometimes for, depending on what the student needs, he might show them this is what Bubba Watson does. And then from some other players who maybe ex are too extreme with something, they go, this is what JB Holmes does or Dustin Johnson. Yeah, so you use... I, I would think so. That would be better. Okay. What would be your most valuable tip for a junior golfer? Valuable tip. Uh, valuable tip. Um, uh, compete a lot. Um, but also have times where you're working on your game, working on your swing. Um, 
you know, on, on both sides of the spectrum, there's there's guys who compete so much that they have never placed time aside to rebuild. So I, I think the fall or the winter for a lot of people, that's a time to rebuild and, and take take note of okay here's a tournament this might be the biggest tournament of the year and then and then work around that or or a couple of big tournaments rather than if there's every week a little tournament i mean it, i think you just start to lose sight of of the big picture and you can be really good with very bad mechanics practice every day do all this stuff and then you end up with uh nowhere to go you have a you've built in ceiling because the mechanics are so poor Gotcha. So learn how to compete, learn how to score, but sometimes if you're playing tournaments week in, week out, that's not the time for you to really work on mechanics and refine your mechanics. Yeah. So you got to have that balance. Exactly. Brian Sherman. Hey Gabe, I have a huge problem with getting the club stuck behind me on the downswing. Specifically, when I watch a video of my downswing, the shaft is often below my forearms in a laid off position. Um, you know, eh, the comments keeps going, but I couldn't get that. So that sounds like a good question. Well, that one could. Could you pass me a club uh, over there? I think Brian goes on to say that this is, has to do with, he actually posted a video of the Tiger Woods and Butch Harmon where Tiger Woods say his lower body out races him. I think he's thinking that might be okay. causing well, some of that. Let, let's look at the, uh, the ways the elbow can get behind. One is it's already behind on the back swing. So if we're already like this, we're, we're, pretty, we're pretty screwed. Yeah. Um, so, so if we're, we're in a good place, and then we still get behind. Let's say one way would be laterally. If my lower body is going this way and my upper body is going this way, where, where else can my elbow go? My, my elbow can't go this way when I'm going this way and I'm falling back that way. So that would be the first thing. Secondly, some people, Jim. Who's that? Jim Perko. Oh yeah, yeah, he don't care. Okay, Jim Perko. So, oh. so we're just gonna call him Jim Perko move. If you get here and then you start going like this, so you're rotating, but then you started this so far in advance of the elbow, which we kind of think that it's better to be almost simultaneous, that the elbow and this left hip can work, work almost immediately together, right? So we get left pelvic tilt, ABT, elbow move, all virtually starting together. Gotcha. I mean, for most people, you know, that's probably more the preferable route. I mean, some of the times... You know, Kelvin, you could probably look at these PGA Tour players, once again, these hybrids or thoroughbreds, yeah. and they can make something like that work. They got a fast enough elbow move to get it back in front. That's right. But, I mean, for the average, you know, guy who's hitting at 240, 250, 260, um, something like that, it could cause some problems. That's right. Stuart Burke. Kelvin, is there any tour player you'd love to work with, past or present? I'd love to see you work your magic with the G-Mac. Oh, wow. That would be a good one because we were just looking at G-Mac's... Uh, new and improved a swing cupping the wrist and massively opening the club face i mean my god i uh, I, I would yeah he would be perfect i mean because because it's like why are you going to change this to this yeah cordell von darkson okay sorry if i didn't get that right in your mind what's the fastest way to improve your game and do you think tiger's 2000 swing is the best ever Tiger 2000 was the best ever. Yes, I mean, I mean, it, it was the combination of power, uh, compact, sim simplicity, kind of like uh, Lydia Ko was. I mean, I think that's he. He was probably the best of that era. And then, and then, of course, you know, how does a player? We don't know what what level. What le does he say? What level he's at or whatever? He does not. Okay. Well, I mean, it, it's hard to kind of generalize, but. But again, it goes back to having this, right? You're gonna, you're gonna maybe periodize is a good way, like they say in training. But you know, do some work on a swing, get out and play some, you know, and and then mix it up. And then and then of course, the guys that are really good are, they're never afraid to be working on their swing, um, though they limit it. But they're never afraid to work on it even during a tournament, even during a. a casual round of golf or whatever to just go and do sometimes what it takes and then also I like uh, being on the course and and like uh, taking videos of my students right I mean you know Johnny or all those guys they, they got videoed on the course because we hold them to doing something uh, on the course as they do on the range because it's no it doesn't 
it's not going to matter if you work a lot in the range and then you swing back on the course, you go back to your comfort zone. Yeah, right? absolutely. I want to chime in, Kelvin, you know, because I'm always preaching a lot of players to take their stats. You know, so if you're asking, you know, how can I improve my game the fastest? It actually has to do with kind of knowing your game and where you're at in that. Like, Karen, Kelvin was saying, like, periodization. Yeah. Okay, like, at certain points, you're going to be at certain stages of your level and your game. You know, might need to know that I'm in a season where I'm, I need to work on my mechanics. And then you might get to a point where we've worked on my mechanics enough. You know, we put six months in. I've got enough to get me started. I need to work on playing and scoring. Scoring, yeah. Or, you know, absolutely. you're going to have to mesh those two. You don't, you're not going to want to, you know, practice mechanics for six months and not never play around at golf. But you're going to kind of need to understand where you are in that process and then, you know, kind of go certain way. Maybe you're now playing really well, you're competing. Now you kind of need to learn how to win. That's you're right. Like, I'm in contention all the time. Now I need to figure out how I can bust through and, you know, start winning. Uh, so the biggest thing, Kelvin, is if I share some of my own experiences, you know, I was working on mechanics for a while and then I decided I had enough to get going and I just started playing and practicing a ton. So I was playing a lot, I was just working on scoring, getting a new rhythm. Uh, my only practice really came when I was warming up between the rounds. And then once I did that for maybe four or five months, I peaked out, I felt like. Like I'm scoring as well as I can, I'm squeezing everything out of my round, I'm not making any course management mistakes, no mental mistakes, it's purely execution at this point. So that's why I came over here because after taking my stats, I realized my ball striking is my weakest point. I'm not playing far courses, I'm not playing narrow courses, and even though my short game putting is good, I'm still you know, not getting to you know, 68, 67 or below on a consistent basis. So. Very good. I mean, I, I, again, it comes back to this knowing where you are weak, knowing where you're strong, and then taking your stats and, and even getting more detailed in the stats like uh, Richie Hunt, who's a member of the uh, MTI site, I mean, have, you know, broken it down to 200 to 225 and 175 to 200 and and where are you actually weak and that gives you a focus on okay I, I'm driving poorly can't hit fairways can't keep it in play work on that or you know if you're if you're weak from 100 yards and in then work on that so there's a lot of things that that are possible to be uh, possibilities as to what to work on, but then you gotta have some focus. And then maybe then in the swing, that, that's where it's important to know what to work on in the swing as opposed to just, well, I just hit beat balls every day. Yeah, that's a huge point. That's something that I see a lot of professional golfers get trapped into is the working hard part. But you know, how smart are they working? How detailed? How well do they know themselves? Because anybody could come out here and just bang balls, chip and putt, mindlessly do it. The hard part is, you know, the focus, the concentration, the effort towards precise information that's relative to you specifically. That's right. I mean, JB, JB told me about, you know, here, here's uh, Billy Horschel who works on the range probably three times more balls beat on the range than JB. And then you go, okay, well, he won FedEx Cup. Great. Happy for you. But then, you know, you got to time that little flip that's coming in there every, every, every swing and it's really difficult. So, I mean, you know, that's where working on the right things would be probably helpful to him. Absolutely. Thanks for watching that video, you guys. If you haven't, make sure you go watch my last couple videos. I got more parts coming to this Q&A. So if you have any questions for Kelvin or I, leave them down in the comment section below. Please subscribe, share this video, like it. And once again, leave a comment if you have a question for Kelvin or me. Thanks for you guys' support. More videos coming soon.